Good evening, everyone. I'm Peter Strong, co-owner and director of Racing Magpie. On behalf of our entire team, I want to welcome everyone to an exciting panel that's part of our um, new this winter program called Winter Camp. Tonight, I'm particularly excited to welcome you to the final component of our month of programming, looking at art and creativity in Lakota education. Um, Critical Lakota Youth Voices, a panel on education led by Wacy Bissonnette, Luta Keegan, Ash Martin, and Tuswecha Mendoza. Uh, at Racing Magpie, we are dedicated to elevating and amplifying Native and other artists and their communities through educational, cultural, and research programs, all in the Lakota spirit of being a good relative. As part of that being a good relative, this program reimagines the Lakota winter camp model of problem solving and community building in today's world by examining the deeper reasons why Lakota people do things the way they do and why they interact with the universe around them the way they do. Uh, these events are free to the public and we target Lakota community members as both presenters and attendees. As plants and trees focus their energy on building strength and growing from the roots during the winter, our community will join to strengthen and grow together each year through sharing and learning. Um, we wanna thank our sponsors for their generous support for allowing us to, with the resources to do these, these great um, sessions. That includes the South Dakota Humanities Council, which is an affiliate of the National Endowment for the Humanities. Uh, the Bush Foundation, and the National Endowment for the Humanities with a direct grant. Finally, um, for my time, so I can get off camera, uh, we've been asked how our supporters can contribute to our work as well. I would suggest at least three ways in this, these times of virtual working and living and community care. Uh, first, you can make a donation to Magpie Creative, which is our nonprofit partner in our work. You can donate through the face, their Facebook page or by mailing in a donation. Buy some raffle tickets. Uh, right now, we're holding an exciting raffle uh, for um, a bunch of original artwork. Uh, $5 a ticket or five tickets for $20. The drawing is this Friday afternoon. You can buy your tickets at www.racingmagpie.com. The third thing is to support native artists and makers and creatives by searching them out and buying art presence and self-care directly from those artists. Uh, that's extremely appreciated. Thank you all for being here on Zoom and on Facebook Live. As our previous presenters this month, Deborah and Christopher Bordeaux said, um, ask the young people what they need and want, they know. And with that, I want to introduce um, my colleague, Gonessa Ashagali, to introduce um, and lead into the panel. Thank you all so much. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Excited to be with you all. I'm Gonessa. I use they, she pronouns. I'm an Iranian here in occupied Ocheti Shakoin territory. Um, just a reminder to fam who are joining us on Zoom, take care of yourself in whatever ways that you need to. Um, camera on or off, eat, drink, uh, meet your body's needs um, as, as your needs arise. This past two weeks, we had really, really wonderful talks from Mrs. and Mr. Bordeaux, the education dream team. And I'm really excited today to have this panel with these beloved young people and to hear from them directly um, throughout uh, our discussion. If questions come up for you or comments, feel free to drop them in the chat, drop affirmations in the chat throughout, encouragements. Um, we're gonna try to be as relaxed as possible and as conversational as possible. Um, yeah, so if things come up for you, drop them in the chat and we'll have specific time for questions at the end too. Um, instead of doing like a very formal introduction, we're gonna do kind of our general like check-in style intros that we do. So I'm gonna invite the young people to introduce themselves, um, offering name, pronouns, if it feels safe or comfortable for you, your community and describe 
um, offer two words that describe how you're feeling in this moment right now. And we'll start with Luta. Hello, everyone. My name is Luta Keegan. My preferred pronouns are she, her, and I'm Ogolala Lakota. And two words to describe how I'm feeling right now is anxious, but safe. I feel very safe. Thank you, dear Luta. Chuswacha. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Chuswacha Mendoza. Um, my, preferred pro my, my preferred pronouns are he and he, him, his. Um, I am Oglala Lakota um, from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And two words, I would have to say I'm happy and, and excited. Yeah. Thank you, dear Chuswacha. Dear Wasey. Betu Washje, my name is Wasey. Um, I'm Oglala Lakota. And two words to describe how I'm feeling right now is probably warm and um, comfortable. Hey, thank you, dear Wasey. So just addressing nerves a little bit, because nerves are natural. I'm feeling like excited and anxious too. Um, you've all been invited to represent yourselves and speak on behalf of yourselves. And there's no expectation of you to be performative in any way, right? So as much as we can shake the nerves and we know that, that relatives are, are holding you and excited to hear what you have to offer, but nerves are real, I feel them too. Let's get started and loosen up as we go along. Um, let's go around in the same order and just offer as feels comfortable again, how old are you? What grade are you in? And where do you go to school? And where were you going to school? So like, just tell us a little bit about like where you're at and where you have been in terms of your schooling. And we'll go in the same order, Luta, Tuswacha, and then Wasey. I am 16. I am a junior in high school. I currently go to school at Lakota Tech. I was going to school at Bennett County. I transferred because I wanted to broaden my experiences and be in a safer environment. And before that, I went to Batesland School. I transferred in about second grade. Thank you, dear Luta Tuswacha. Um, I'm 14 years old. Um, I'm a freshman at Putney High School, which is a um, East Coast boarding school. Um, I went to school at West Middle School and South Middle School here in Rapid. Um, and I, yeah. Thank you, dear Chuswacha. Dear Wasey? Um, I'm 17 years old. I'm, I'm a junior at Red Cloud Indian School. And I've actually went there since I was a kid, uh, since kindergarten. Awesome, thank you so much. Dear Luta, can you talk about um, your decision to change schools and tell us a little bit about the differences um, in experience that you had and how did you feel maybe specifically to like as a Lakota student in those different, in those different settings? Yes, definitely. So when I attended Bennett County High School, I felt like I wasn't represented as an indigenous person and I was kind of just silenced. My voice didn't seem to, you know, it didn't seem to have any value there. I didn't feel like I mattered even as a person, you know, on top of being an indigenous student. And when I transferred to Lakota Tech, I really had in mind that I could broaden my experiences, like I said, and it, I could involve my culture while doing so. And that has been my experience so far, especially with my STEM teacher, um, that they really include indigenous knowledge with that. And I couldn't, I'm so happy for that. So definitely two very different experiences. And I'm glad I transferred this year and it has been hard because so far Lakota Tech has been doing online to keep everyone safe. They are doing basketball and they won their first game so good for them. Um, but yeah I definitely it was a decision for the better and I would encourage don't listen to I heard a lot of 
things like, oh, it's a school on the reservation, you're not going to get anywhere, it's not going to challenge you, but it's been 10 times harder in the better way. I've been equipped with the resources that I needed as a Lakota student. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Jirtu Swecha, can you speak a little bit about your experience as a Lakota student going to school in the settlement of Rapid City and your decision, right, to start, start high school somewhere, somewhere very different? Tell us um, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, first starting off, I went to sixth grade at South Middle School and, um, and just definitely were able to um, realize the different struggles um, as a Lakota student. And, um, someone who definitely used their voice a lot when it comes to social justice and into the school. And um, I think definitely agreeing with um, um, Luta here is just um, realizing um, how at, at moments and in, in, um, throughout your time at school, there is gonna be moments where um, your voice as an indigenous person is gonna be silenced. And um, I think realizing where I wanted to go in life and and um where the different roads I wanted to be able to take I um decided to go to Putney High School um in Vermont and I think it's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made um knowing on how there's um still the the challenges when it comes to being an indigenous student in the school system um but I feel like um, where I'm at specifically, I'm able to, to have a, a stronger voice um, and having support from my peers and, and um, being able to come back here and still be able to have that voice um, from um, my relatives is, is something that it's definitely been a change, but is also feels good inside for sure. Well, thank you so much, dear Tuswecha. Wacy, how about you? So you've been kind of in the, you've been in the same, same school system, right? What's that been like for you? And how, how has your perspective or experience changed as you've, as you've grown and progressed through mm -hmm. that particular school system? So Red Cloud is like a Catholic and Lakota Christian, our Lakota Christian school. And compared to like my early ages or like early years, with elementary and middle school compared to high school, I feel like it's changed dramatically in like religion and um, culture because in my early years, I kind of didn't, I, did, I didn't really have like a choice of like wanting to learn or like discover um, more about my culture in my early years because I feel like they didn't have resources. When I first started in um, Rec Lab, but as I went to like high school, I feel like they, they, the school received more resources upon the Lakota culture and they were um, offered to us. And now we, we kind of get to choose if we, so they have mass and we kind of get to choose if we want to go sometimes. And, but most of the times they have us um, go to mass, um, whether or not we believe in God or not, or like um, the Christian God. And so it's it's really different compared to kindergarten and now or like early years do you feel like we see that you have in in the building and in your teachers like support if you if you felt a particular kind of way like who who would you be able to go to in the building to talk about that or express those feelings um i feel like there are probably are they they are supportive of like of culture and religion and um the only thing is that like i said that they they make us go to mass sometimes even though we don't believe in the christian god and i feel like i feel like we we should have the choice or choice to go or not to mass and i feel like we should receive even more um resources upon the Lakota culture. Thank you, dear Wacy. Um, let's talk specifically about schooling during the pandemic. 
because like school already has its own challenges and difficulties and now you're you're all going to school and have been going to school under really really particular circumstances what's what's that been like what's been challenging what's been good about it just share a little bit about your experience so when i first started school i was like really optimistic, you know, because that's just who I am and how I am. But as time went on, it kind of got hard because I am alone all day and I'm staring at a screen like <laughs> from 8 a.m. to sometimes like 1 a.m. doing homework and doing a lot of things. And then I just felt kind of this weight on me and I didn't know what to do. And that was in until I discovered Racing Magpie's first workshop with Larie. <laughs> that just changed everything for me. It seriously did. That was at one of the best things that I've ever discovered. And I'm so thankful to Racing Magpie, to Peter, to Larie for offering that because that really did have a huge impact on me and how I perceived things. And I'm still staying optimistic, but sometimes it can just get overwhelming because I have other things that I want to do, but I have to, <laughs> I have to realize that I have to work hard, yes, but online school has been totally different during this pandemic than it was last year when I was in school in better ways and in worse ways. Now I don't have to deal with, you know, people that don't have my best interest in mind, which I like. Um, I'm in a more supportive system, but it's also, like I stated before, it's hard to keep up on schoolwork because you just feel like almost every day is the same, but I'm working, <laughs> I'm working, you know, we're going to work through this as a community. Thank you, dear Luta, affirming you in what you're feeling. I feel it too. Dear Tuswacha, how about for you? What's it been like? Your circumstances are different, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, first, um, I finished off my eighth grade year um, online, and I think that was probably something that really, I don't know, it was a struggle because I'm a visual learner personally. and. Um, I, I, I couldn't do it. So um, I, that really pushed me also to go to the school where I am now. Um, so there, it's, since it's a boarding school, I, we stay on campus and um, it's, it's just kind of, it's really its own little community. So um, I think definitely not knowing um, and not been able to have the, I don't know, um, gone through the struggles is, um, um, these two have with whether it's with online school um and all my peers back here i wouldn't be able to know exactly how that has been um only knowing the beginning of covid and um what it has um begun now but um off of my experience i mean definitely there's the struggles of um being six feet and and everything with that because i'm a very i don't know um social person so i think that was probably one of the biggest struggles, but I think um, these two will be able to um, I don't know, explain that better, um, knowing where, yeah. Yeah, I didn't even think about like when we were talking in preparation for this about how you you had your own pod, right? Like school pod and you all are able to interact with each other and be physically present with each other. I'm happy for you. Wishing that for us all soon in the best ways. Wacy, how about you? What's it been like? Um, virtually, virtual school or like schooling during the pandemic. It, it was rough when one of my junior year started. It was like us students had to remind the teachers and staff and admin that we're human and like we need breaks and like we can't stay on a computer like um, for many hours and work and work and work. And I feel like um, the the school thinks like just because we're home, we could do like homework or like more work or like that. So I feel like they're kind of overworking us this year. And um, 
Um, also, oh, I lost my train of thought. Um, it's just been rough. Like it was, it was like worse at the start, but like as we started like voicing our opinions, us students, um, it it kind of got like smoother, but it's still like bumpy for for us, and we're still struggling. But like we're going through it together. We as students offer support and help to each other whenever we need it. Yeah. Do you feel like the the teachers and administration were open to your your feedback? that y'all are feeling overworked or that your needs as as people existing in a pandemic are not are not being met? Yeah, we mainly like talk to the um, teachers and I think they talk to like the admin or whatever. Um, but I think they were very like accepting and like supportive of our feedback um, most of the time. That's good, that's encouraging, thank you. So it's come up before Luta mentioned specifically um, resources. What are what are your thoughts on access to resources at the different schools that you've attended? And what are what are some resources that your school could offer um, that would help you that maybe they don't offer currently? Or what are resources that they do offer that are super helpful? So the difference in resources. So I definitely have a lot more resources for various things now. Um, I think I mentioned how my STEM teacher includes indigenous knowledge, but not only do they do that, they, add, they tell us about things that are going on. Like there was this, I don't know this, specific name but it was for indigenous students and it was throughout Canada and down here um, about building a, proto a prototype and that was really cool she they always offer us stuff like that so I'm really grateful for that because I've never gotten that before where a teacher cared so much even outside of school to offer stuff like that especially being an indigenous student um, before this year, the only experience I've really had was negative with me being a Lakota student and um, just having to, <laughs> yeah, resources definitely like with being a Lakota student, like cultural wise and education wise, when you combine that, that is really good. It's so good. And I'm sure some people would agree with me on that, that it just makes your performance better because you just feel valued. And right now I'm getting like sack lunches and a lot of healthy food in those too, like a bunch of fruit. And I eat those because sometimes when we're at home all day alone, you know, it's just hard to do the tasks that like we, that were so easy to us before this pandemic. I didn't get um, lunches when COVID started, well, began like closing schools down in March. My previous school didn't offer any kind of um, computers, um, food. Um, the homework was excessive, so excessive. And I feel like I, when we would go to put all our work, turn our work in, we had to take it into the school. There was this huge bin and they just piled everyone's work in and it all got mixed up. I was like, I did all of this work and they didn't improve my grades one bit. My grades actually, I just was actually really upset with that because we're in a pandemic, you're giving more work and I worked really hard just to get less of a better grade. My grades declined and they didn't even offer the resources. No computers, no Wi-Fi boxes. Um, Lakota Tech offers Wi-Fi boxes. I know that they've given iPads out to students, some computers, which is really good because a lot of students don't have access to those things. And I'm actually hoping that some students will reach out to me at my school because I've um, come across ways to um, 
be better at presentations like on Google Docs. So helping out one another too with resources is really good. That's all I have to say. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for adding that bit is of, of being resources for each other, right? That's beautiful and valuable. I'm having a visual of like young people doing all of this work and then it being like dumped into a pit and that feels really bad. I'm really sorry that you experienced that. That bothers me a lot. Tuswecha, how about you? What are, what are resources like? Differences in resources here at your current school? How's it going? Um, definitely, I mean, um, I know a lot of people think about like when they think of resources like counseling, um, like different after school clubs and, and definitely is something that, um, here in the school system um, in Rapid is needed, um, like just really, yeah. And I think um, another one is just like the teacher and um, student relationships is something that I think is forgotten about. It's, it's, it's just the teacher needs to teach the student and the student needs to behave. And that's kind of the what I've noticed um, throughout middle school and elementary school. And it's it's been, um, something where you're just kind of getting by school and where it should be there. There has to be that support from both ways. And I know during COVID there's, um, everyone's struggling um, with stress and, and we're overworked from administration, et cetera. And I think um, like Luther was saying with resources from different, um, like what the different students are able to have, um, whether it's it's adequate um, internet um, devices and, and also, um, like an adequate place to work. Um, I know that a lot of my peers like aren't able to have like a, a place in their house to go and, and, and get some work done knowing that whether they're um, being the parent for their, their bro younger brothers and sisters or and it, it's just um, realizing the different um, circumstances people are in and also knowing, um, going back to counseling is one of the things where um, there was always that option, but there never was. Um, there would be a couple students who would who would go try it out, and it wouldn't work out. And then there would there was never that support. So it would be there would be like a common hate for the counselor. Or just it, it was there wasn't that good relationship where it was um, a, a relationship where there should be. And I think. Um, at the school where I'm at, we live on campus, so there's definitely more resources and, and blessed to be able to have that relationship with my teachers. And um, it's the first time like I'm able to genuinely like a teacher and where I feel like I'm engaged in the learning other than um, getting by and realizing that, um, leaving behind the people here, knowing that they're still having to go through that is something that it's it's a bummer and I want to be able to help that so knowing that relationships are probably is really big wow thank you so much dear to Swetcha. thank you for offering that dear Wacy, what are you thinking um I feel like um Red Cloud um fortunately miss it our um fortunately um, most of their students, um, most of their students, uh, um, students' needs are um, met. But at, to echo off of what Tuswecha said about like um, students' environment and like their problems, I don't feel like the teachers and admin have like sympathy for that because they're like expected to be on Zoom at a specific time and like to work and turn in their homework at a specific date and um yeah that they're i don't know like the mental mental health and like um food and water are met stuff like that um i think like they offer like um counselors and people to talk to like you could text them or whatever or video chat with them but um like i said i don't think that the students like with family problems and a safe or like not really like a busy environment in their house or er, met. Thank you, dear Wacy. I'm hearing all of you speaking to the importance of relationships 
I'm hearing all of you speaking to the importance of like practical, practical resources, right? Like basic needs needing to be met and, and a lot of emphasis on um, mental health needs and prioritizing mental health needs and the ways in which that happens and does not happen in different settings. Thank you. We touched on this a little bit. Let's talk specifically about qualities and characteristics of teachers without naming teachers, right? But thinking about, because we do have a lot of educators and youth workers who are on the call, what are qualities and characteristics of teachers that you don't appreciate that have been not okay? What are the things that have been a problem for you? Well, I think a big factor that I did not appreciate was being quizzed on who I am as an indigenous person by a teacher, um, trying to get me to inform the whole entire class while quizzing me and just invalidating what I was saying, saying that's not correct or <laughs> yeah, that was a big factor. That's a big no, no, you do, don't do that. But another characteristic that I do not appreciate is I've noticed this too, and this has nothing to do with um, student athletes. This has more to do with teachers. I've noticed not necessarily at my school I'm at now, I have not seen that, but at the previous school I was at, they valued ath students who played sports over just other students and thought they were better or that they, and it's like, that's not how it works. Everyone has things that they want to pursue. And if sports is that, then great. If another student wants to pursue arts, great. We shouldn't be um, dismissing the worth of another student because they do not play sports. I have noticed that and it, it makes me mad because I saw a lot of that. And I do see a lot of like characteristics of, oh yeah, that just made me, um, yeah, trying to invalidate like not even just indigenous voices, but um, other cultures. I had uh, classmates of other cultures who went through the same things that I had to go through with these teachers. And I actually stuck up and I said, that is not okay to ask. You should not be asking that. So those are, and for future educators or educators right now, really listen to your students and how they react to what you say, because it is important. It is extremely important. And that's what I have to say. Thank you, dear Luta. To switch, how about you? Um, knowing that we'll touch on things that um, are helpful, but um, realizing just um, one of like the many things is the lack of um, knowledge when it comes to or awareness when it comes to um, teaching about um, Native and Indigenous people's history um, is something that I've I've noticed and, and grown up with um, throughout um, my time in school and and. Uh, from up to now and and whenever I do finish school is, is something that I'm realizing I'm gonna have to live through and um, work as hard as I can to fix that. But it's something that it's gonna take time, but realizing um, whether it comes to like reading textbooks um, that were written ages ago. Um, and I think especially in rapid um, teachers not realizing that or um, not taking into count that there um, are indigenous students in that room and the things that they're teaching are harmful um, when it comes to lack of information and um, disinformation. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest things for me is, is just um, whether I've, how I've thought of a teacher and perceived a teacher has all been through um, how they went about that and how they went about um, whether it's, it's, asking the Indian kid um, certain questions just because they're the Indian kid in that room or it's either that or genuinely wanting to know more is one of the things that I've been able to either say or I respect this teacher is they respect me. And I think 
that's one of the things that I've, I've um, grown up as is um, I'll respect someone. Um, they can hate me, but I'm still going to respect them, but wanting to be able to have that um, mutual relationship um, with the teacher and student. So having um, one of the other things I've noticed with teachers is they put students into groups, whether it's the ones that they send into the sent out to the hall every every class or um, ones they send to the office or the ones that they move to the front of the class or sit by their desk. And it's one of the things where I think that forms those unhealthy relationships with teachers and students. And I think that's something that's going to need to be fixed because it's it's that's not something that they're going to be able to learn from. And these are um, kids who are growing and, and who are going through a lot. And I think we don't take into account what's going on at home and um, et cetera. And being able to have that um, knowledge and awareness when it comes to that and just being more aware um, um, how you interact with students, whether it's through teaching or, or that relationship from adult to child. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tier 2 Swacha. Wacy, how about you? Um, I feel like um, Tuswetra and Luta hit most of the points that are like similar points that I don't appreciate from teachers. But one thing I really don't appreciate is whenever like a teacher expects respect, but not like reciprocates that. And it's like really hard when it comes to like, because as Tuswetra said, that, that, that relationship between the student and the teacher is really like really important especially like throughout the year because you're like if you don't have like a good relationship with that teacher you won't like have a good school year and like it's just gonna like go all downhill from that so i think it's really like important for teachers to connect with students um and to like form a relationship with them and um yeah thank you thank you so much how about how about qualities and characteristics that y'all appreciate? What are what are the kind of standout qualities and characteristics that you've experienced? I really like characteristics of teachers that they're very understanding. And that's probably like my favorite thing ever is their understanding. I remember I had this huge project due and my little kitty Chai passed away and I was so sad. I was so sad and I couldn't even focus. I couldn't even focus on my school or anything for about like three days. I was just heartbroken because that was like my support system right now in this pandemic being alone. So I emailed my teacher and I said, I my my cat passed away i'm just not feeling ready mentally i will get it done and it will be great and they were so understanding that's really good and deadlines yeah it you don't want to take six months to do a math problem but you you want to give students you know time to do these things well assigning five assignments a day and expecting them to excel that's that's not how it works maybe with some that that's how they get better but with a majority that i've encountered they excel when they really understand their criteria that the teacher is teaching so that's important you guys too and i also appreciate you know when teachers are just they make you feel safe and they make your voice feel like it, it matters because it does. Your voice does matter too. And who was it? I don't know if it was Wacy that said, um, you need to, it's a mutual relationship that you need to respect each other. That's really key. I've always heard um, adults need the respect and students, they don't no, because students have lives too, you know, it goes both ways. So I really appreciate teachers that understand that, who are very understanding, emphasis on understanding. Thank you, dear Luta. To Swetcha, how about you? Um, definitely bouncing off of what um, Luta said on having like a safe um, learning environment is something that 
Um, anytime there's a teacher that is able to build that environment and, and able to create a, a a classroom that you're able to um, be able to learn and still feel like you're um, you're not like being forced to do whatever you're doing or you're you're able to be engaged in what you're doing and, and be respected like Buddha said and um, just also bring like bringing into the fact that like I mean a lot of teachers when it comes to um, discipline is something that that can go left or right when it comes to um, whether a student respects you or not and that's how um, anytime it's I'm a very talkative person that got me in trouble a lot when it comes to school so I think um, how a how a teacher is able to go about that and in and, and worse situations on um, how they address those with whether it's with um, an adult to child or like that kind of um, I don't know, old school way of it, then I think um, other than like seeing them as someone not below them um, is something that I've, I feel is very important. And um, also the, like the way that they're able to check in on students and um, whether or not the student opens up to you, I guarantee that they're able to, they're gonna take that into account and they're gonna realize, oh wait, someone so cares about me, you know? Um, whether it comes to, I know in sixth grade, I had a teacher who um, I didn't really, I didn't get a good vibe from them. I just, um, I did good in their class and, and didn't really think of them much outside of that. Um, and I had a a class where I, I guess, I don't know, I I tend to not like try to show feelings a lot, and but he was able to come up to me outside of class and he's like, you don't have to say anything, but I just want to let you know, like, if you need to talk. And um, I didn't open up. I just, like I said, oh, no, I'm good. But it definitely, like, got to me and, like, the fact that I was like, oh, so-and-so cares um, whether I'm going to open up to him or not. He's going to be someone who's there, which is very important. So, yeah. Thank you, dear. It's what uh, dear Wacy, how about for you? Um, things that I appreciate from teachers is probably like actually like working with them and not being like sent to the office for like the principal to deal with. And um, another, there was like a, so like there's like these, I can like tell there's like a difference between the relationships between like non-Indigenous and Indigenous teachers at Red Club. I fortunately had a, a relative who worked as a teacher at Red Cloud and they like actually like cared about us and like they like spoke up spoke up for us and like whether or not it like cost them their job, they would speak up for us and like like make made sure like we were okay, our needs were met. Um like we were actually like like this teacher actually like formed a bond. Kind of getting emotional but um this teacher like actually like formed a bond with like the students and like like it was actually like we, we were family and like and it was like we were like like actual relatives and like they cared about us and they like I don't know it was just like really like amazing and like I've I've never experienced that with like a teacher was before and it just like felt like someone actually like cared for us and stuff yeah love you BB thank you for sharing that with us Luta is also expressing in the chat gratitude for that experience that you had also fam feel free to shout out if that's if there's a person that you want to shout out that's different than naming people that we can't stand right <laughs> so if you want to shout that teacher out feel free to do that and we can all celebrate them as it feels comfortable to you okay ready for the next question it's a big one so there's lots of talk in classrooms um, and schools about preparing students for the real world, 
right? And we know that usually when they talk about preparing young people for the real world, it's a lot of like replication or recreation of, of like ugly, ugly oppression um, or, or asking students to like adjust themselves to oppressive systems, right? Or, or resign themselves to um, oppression. It, so based on your experience, what would actually be helpful for you? Like what, what are the things, right? You spend years and years of your life in compulsory schooling. So what are things in school, in this mandatory schooling that you have to do that would actually help you that you think would prepare you for, for life beyond schooling? So... For me personally, I think building relationships with the people around me and mental health, teaching us about just how to, how to address situations and how to respond to situations because sometimes students aren't, they don't know how to respond to certain situations and they just need guidance and where are they going to find that? Like, if we don't learn it, you know, I think that would be really, really good. I wish that I got that. And I realized that there are counselors in school and outside of school. But if this was even a class, that would be amazing. Like, maybe you could make it mandatory or not, depending on if the students wanted to take it. Um, this is already happening, but emphasis on culture, too. That's like, my where I feel safe and where I feel loved is the people around me and my community and that's why I said you know building these relationships that's important because this no that's not about popularity this is about you know feeling safe and that's something you can carry with you for the rest of your life the thing the relationships you make now is something that could affect your life too in the long run in a very positive way Thank you, dear Luta. Let's see what this comment is. From Cindy on Facebook, you are all awesome. You all have such strong voices. Keep it up. Thank you, Cindy. You write, Cindy, you write. Um, Tuswacha, what do you think about things that you can carry into your life, things that would be helpful for you to, to move forward with? Um. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know lot of teachers in, in the schooling system um, teaches everything um, from taxes or um, stuff like that. But I know that there's a lot more to life than that. Um, like Luta said, when it comes to relationships and when it comes also to mental health is a um, big one when it comes to that. So I think being able to, that you're when you're an adult, um, not knowing, but like hearing, um, there's a lot of, you're gonna go through problems, um, whether it's financially, whether it's um, with relationships, um, whether it's through racism, homophobia, there's gonna be that. Um, there's there's gonna be many struggles. And I think that the schooling system doesn't teach that, um, how to get over those. And I, I know that um, when it comes to that knowledge and when it comes to that support that they've been able to have that, that's able to define where a student goes after high school. So I, um, I think being able to um, teach how to get over those problems and, and not get over them, but be able to um, work through them and, and be able to understand and, and being, you know, um, but I don't know. Yeah, just trying to, I think there's a lot more to life than just numbers. And so, um, knowing how to be able to effectively tell that to um, teenagers is, yeah. <laughs> For sure. So like support and working through things, right? And I'm hearing Luta saying that it doesn't need to be just like having counseling services, that that emphasis on mental health and well-being, like holding each other and asking for help should be something that permeates, right? All, all of your schooling, not just the service that is available, that everybody should have access to that all the time. Yes, Luta saying, allow us to be sensitive in the chat. Yes. Lacey, how about you? 
Um, I feel like our school could better prepare us for life if they like offered classes that were like tailored to our experience. Like we like give them like what we want to like we tell them our future. They're like, all right, we'll give you like these type of classes and we'll help you like um, guide you on that path and offer you support and resources for these um, for your future life. And I also feel like they should offer classes to like help us like in the like the real real world like of like needing help like because personally I don't know how to like pay bills or like write a check or do anything like financial or whatever and I feel like they should like offer classes like that or like teach you how to fix a car because like we're all gonna own a car one day and are most of us I hope um but um I feel like they should just like focus on the future and like what to switch I said it's not all about numbers and um yeah Thank you for naming practical skills and needs too. Those are real. Another Facebook comment from Linda, hearing things from the youth perspective is so important. Thanks for sharing how you feel about things so openly. It takes courage. That's right. That's true too. Okay, so let's dream a little bit. If you had your own school or your ideal school, what would your dream school look like? What would it be like? What would it feel like? Um, what Wacy was saying, like how he wished there was more of a tailored, you know, choice to your classes. Like maybe students could choose, like, because I've noticed I only get like two classes that I can choose. Um, other than that, like they're all picked for me, you know, like the general mass, the reading, the other stuff. Like maybe I want to take a different math class right now <laughs> than the one I'm taking. Um, that I think that would actually allow students to excel because that would make them more interested in what they're learning. And definitely a school with good architecture. I like, you know, like really, it, not necessarily big, but it has unique aspects that would draw students. And I think that would be just so awesome. Like maybe even make it colorful. And because I haven't been in my this building of the school I'm at now, but I, I haven't even seen it yet. But my previous school, it was just kind of, yeah. You know, like, it, I just dreaded it because it was just so, it, it, you know, that just heavy vibe that you get and the dark, like the dark outer building and, you know, and it just wasn't very comforting or, so I would definitely do that and I would value all of my students' voices and I would listen, listen to everyone's critique and what they like and even what they don't like often school systems don't like to hear what students don't like like no you can't you can't you have to like everything that's not often the reality like there's going to be some things that just need to be changed and that's what a dream school for me would look like also teachers who don't base your worth around grades i had someone who was supposed to be helping me with my future college applications tell me that I couldn't get into a college that I liked because I didn't do good on one test that that was down the drain it's just shoot lower shoot lower don't do art don't do any of this that's not the real world <laughs> like that don't you don't don't write don't do any of this you know go work a nine to five job and that's how you will succeed when a lot of students have dreams, and I think we should be encouraging those dreams. Thank you, dear Luta. Tuswecha, how about you, dream school? Um, definitely, it would um, be a, a Lakota and indigenous school um, where Lakota language and um, indigenous language would be um, something that would be know, um, utilized and um would be one of the classes that would be mandatory just knowing um but 
um, the school that I'm at now, knowing what Luther said around grades is um, we don't do grades. So we have something um, called the block system. So where we have um, one to four, so where the teachers will at the end, just write to you and, and say how, like, how have you done and, and and like what can you do better and like how can I, how have I seen your growth throughout this trimester and um I think in my dream school that's something that I want to implement um knowing how grades can be really stressful and um I don't want that to be something that defines a person's worth in life um and definitely involving the traditional aspect when it comes to um drawing me hunting um and et cetera, being able to stay connected traditionally and, and still be able to um, work on what we want to now and um, whether it comes to being a lawyer, et cetera, and given um, Native students who, who normally wouldn't be offered those um, different experiences, being able to have that um, and be able to do that without having to worry about financial stuff, things like that, is being able to have that freedom of, of education and yeah, definitely. Thank you, dear Tuswacha. Dear Wacy, how about you, dream school? Um, my dream school would probably be like, and like teachers would be like indigenous and we wouldn't be like afraid to have connections or relationships with them and um probably like i said for like how 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 could our school like better prepare for us in the in the future um probably like a tailored experience like college because like college you like go for like a specific major or whatever and like they give you specific classes or like classes that will help you grow to that objective and i feel like we should we should have the opportunity for high school and like middle school and elementary school and like what Tuswetra said, like having like a culture, like focus school, like to like grow upon of our, our traditions. And also like, instead of like testing, like our knowledge and like our like ability to like remember like specific things, like now how we do it, I feel like we should like celebrate our knowledge instead of test. Yeah. Support that. Thank you, dear Wacy. Okay, y'all wanted to answer this question. This feels like a big question, right? But where do you see yourself after high school? And do you see yourself potentially as an educator or youth worker, given your strong feelings and your ideas and your experiences? Where do I see myself after high school? <laughs> I thought a lot about this, you guys, <laughs> um, but I'm not really rushing it. You know, I feel like it'll just come to me, like my life calling. And somewhat I know that I'm, I like arts and stuff like that. And I have been thinking about, you know, architecture and engineering. So while I might not be an educator, I would be designing buildings for our native youth and things like that. Like that is something that makes me so happy. And I once heard, I'm gonna tell you guys this because it changed the way I saw things. There's two different types of like goals. There's the goals where you have, okay, I'm gonna lose two pounds in one day, or I'm going to get this like very specific, you know, like, just very specific goals. And once you, you, you tell yourself, once I reach that, then I can be happy. I can't be happy right now while I'm working towards that goal. Once I reach that, then I'm happy. That's, and then that leads to the next goal. This goal is more like overall, like I wanna be a safe person to others, a welcoming person. I wanna be, loving i want to be strong i want to help others succeed and that will in turn benefit me and it's really good to go about the second way now this doesn't mean you can't have goals for yourself like i want to be a lawyer i want to be a doctor i want to be an artist this means that you're not going to define your happiness based on if you get the go to that goal or not because you can be happy without these 
superficial goals sometimes. And that's definitely something that's playing into myself right now. So where do I see myself after high school? It's not necessarily like a specific spot. I see myself as this young Lakota woman who's <laughs> leading forward and just doing, just feeling very in a settler world that's trying to diminish my voice to speak up about important topics. And I'm not going to let anyone stop me. That's, <laughs> that's kind of where I stand along that. Mashallah, thank you, dear Luta. Swacha, how about you? Um, definitely um, after high school, college is something that I wanna be able to pursue. And um, after that, I have always wanted to um, I know, be able to represent in a way. Um, I don't know. I, I want to be able to do something where I'm not. Um, I want to be able to be involved in in something in a way where I'm not sitting on the sidelines or or in a like in a little cubicle. And I think um, knowing where my Ina um, went with um, social work and and I've always. Um, considered that as maybe um, something, but like Lutha said, um, realizing like where you are, um, it's that doesn't have to be in a job or or um, any specific place. And I I believe that that's I want to be in a place where I'm able to um, support. You know, I don't know. I think I've like I've thought about it a lot and. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of going in a way. I don't know. I'm just kind of moving at my pace, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Probably didn't make any sense, but yeah. It totally made sense. Thank you. It made so much sense. Um, Ashley on Facebook says, what an amazing conversation. Thank you for your honesty and vulnerability to all of you. Dear Wacy, how about you? Where do you see yourself? after high school, what you think um, about education, youth work potential? <laughs> um, when I was younger, I wanted to be everything. I like, I was like, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be an artist. I want to be a cook somewhere. I want to be a doctor. And um, now, now that I think of it, I, I still want to be everything. But um, I, I don't really like want a nine to five job. And I wish like, we didn't have to like work jobs, but then like our jobs kind of like put, like, like we're doing our part in the world kind of. And I feel like I wish like we didn't have to work for like our basic necessities or like needs. Like I wish like we got free houses. I wish we got free food and stuff like that. And um, cause like there's, the, there's like, there are like things like we need and stuff, but sorry to get off topic, but um i i'm probably gonna go to college and um i kind of want to like major in like maybe political science and like become something in the government and speak up and advocate for advocate become an advocate for um minority groups and um fight for them and um Sorry, I was reading the comments, which she said. Um, but yeah, I think I'm I'm still not sure because I had like a lot of plans because I wanted to be an anesthesiologist and then I wanted to be a nurse. And but then now I want to like I'm on the path of like be majoring in um, political science. So I'm not sure yet. Mr. Bordeaux on Facebook says, hang into and pursue those dreams no matter how long it takes. Thank you. And thank you, dear Wacy, for sharing. I hear I hear all the all the BBs dreaming of a of a world and a future that is free of capitalism. I hear it in everything all of you offered, and that brings me great joy. I, I want that future for all of us too. Um, any final thoughts, y'all? Things that you want to communicate? to each other, to other young people, to educators, community, family, 
And then we'll open it up to some questions and comments from FAM on Facebook and in the Zoom call. Um, I would like to say that it's okay for your decisions or feelings to fluctuate and that's you're totally allowed to do that like you do not have to you know be set on one thing and then 30 years in you're like well I don't really really like doing this right now like you can always change and just that's I think that's a really big factor of life and I just want to say to educators, thank you. Um, the educators that value Indigenous voices, thank you so much. It does not go unnoticed. And continue to do resource research and let us speak to, you know. And I also wrote down a thought. This goes back to my dream school. It, I would not have non-Indigenous people teaching Indigenous history. It would be Indigenous teachers teaching indig indigenous history because oftentimes they invalidate the history and make it seem less than and it's in the past not a big deal it's done and over with uh, let's move on <laughs> no so that's something a big thing in my dream school too thank you dear lita dear to Swetcha. closing thoughts additional thoughts what you got yeah, I mean, um, I think um, Luca kind of said it all. And um, I mean, just thank you to everybody who was like, help support this. And thank you to Racing Magpie and to Uncle Nessa and um, Luca and Wacy. And um, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for all you guys and you guys have done support wise. And yeah, and the community as well, for sure. Thank you, dear Chuswacha. Dear Wacy. Final thoughts, additional um, thoughts. I just want to say like a big thank you to like Racing Magpie and relatives, like Gonessa and um, Peter who put this on and Luta and Tuswetcha and Ash who unfortunately couldn't make it. Um, but I wanted to go back to like the um, the question of what we, what would your dream school look like? Um, I'd, I forgot like the point of making it like, by indigenous students for indigenous students and like i feel like that would be like a really good thing especially like the reservation and like people where like um like people were places with um indigenous um communities yeah so thank you thank you dear wacy so grateful to all three of you Wish that dear Ash could have joined us to what we know that life happens. Um, hopefully we can pull them into conversation with us another time. Family on Facebook and on the Zoom, Zoom chat with us, would you like to offer anything, any questions that you have? And of course, if there are questions, ask that folks don't feel comfortable answering. We're always allowed to say, I don't feel comfortable answering that. So feel free to ask your questions and also know that, that everybody can say, don't want to answer that question right now too. Talia on Facebook. Oh, and Autumn offered up above. Thank you all for sharing and that they appreciate you all so much. Thank you, dear Autumn. Talia asks, what are some obstacles you anticipate for the future in terms of education? Anyone can take it. We can go in the same order. Um, some obstacles. I've heard like a lot of people who are very pro-capitalist and just try and say that, well, why do uh, these indigenous voices need to be valued over others in educational systems? Well, let me say this, the, these are schools on reservations. Well, the one I go to, that's why they matter. And like even outside of reservations, like <laughs> we're, we're, we're from here. This is the land we are from. So we do matter. And so many people don't know that we are still here. I've actually received messages saying, I thought Native people were extinct. Um, that's what my school taught. We, and also textbooks 
getting correct information out to all of these education all over, just even shooting big, like even all over the world, because I don't even know like people who aren't from here, if they even know. So that would definitely be an obstacle that in the future we're going to have to overcome. Thank you, dear Luta. To Swetra or Wasey, would either of you or both of you like to speak to that question? Yeah, I mean, obstacles in the future. Um, I think, I know there's going to be some things that um, obviously times change. I mean, if you asked me that before COVID, I would have like had totally different answers. But I, I think, I don't know. I've always like, I don't know, I've never really thought about the future and I don't know. I just wanna say that's gonna, I don't know, I'll think about that. Thank you, dear Chuskwacha. Wasey? Um, to echo off of what both of the youth folks said, um, probably like the one, one like big obstacle, but like not, yeah, like one basic, big obstacle is probably like um, the oppressive system and like white supremacy and stuff like that. And, it's probably like one big obstacle in front of us, but I know that us indigenous people and people of color and marginalized groups, if we all like, what's the word? Like, um, like a word for like group up together or like whatever. And like, like um, relearn and like, like relearn our ways and stuff like that. We will, we'll, we'll make it through and um yeah. Thank you, dear Wacy, for naming the big, big, big obstacles, right? They, those are real. Um, Pat Astu offers in the chat, much love and appreciation to the amazing panelists. This was by far the best discussion I've been to, the best professional development training I've received. Your generous and valuable offerings spoke to my heart and I learned so much from you all. Accurate, that's real. Mike offers in the chat, thank you all for sharing. I feel inspired and I look forward to our future, especially with you all in it. Mr. Bordeaux offers on Facebook a question, who can you go to and influence to start making the changes that you've addressed? What kind of moves could you be making? I might have some insight. Um petitions also like i know that there are some groups that do this but going around to other schools and just educating like showing like our culture like what we how important it is that you understand that we are still here and respect showing mutual respect like <laughs> and le learning and this is actually a reference from Laylee Long Soldier's poem to unbraid, to unbraid some things that people have been taught. That means to unlearn, as I perceived it, to unlearn these things that you've been taught about us that are just not true. And that's definitely, yeah, to unbraid these things and to educate and continue educating. That's the best I could do about that right now. <laughs> Thank you, dear Luta. To Swetcher, Wacy, do y'all want to speak to that question? Um, I feel like we could go to each other and like start to like influence each other and like teach and unlearn and like what Luta said, like to unlearn um the oppressive system stuff. And um, I don't know, just to just like go to each other for help and support and to influence each other to make a change. Thank you for naming that to Swetcha. Yeah, and I think, um, I don't know, I guess, um, being on the set, I get a little frustrated, but like um, um, starting off with, like when I've been in the school system, like here in Rapid, um, trying to make those changes. And, and I think we've gone over that discussion of like, well, what are you gonna do? Like, you know, it's kind of like, well, this isn't our problem, you know, and it's, it's the problems and like the things that we addressed are it's it's stuff that we definitely want to change 
And so we're going to be a part of that change, but it ultimately it comes from the, the people and it comes from the problem itself. And so I, I don't think that's, it's definitely not us. And I think it has to be something where it can't just be put onto like the youth's little plate and, and trying to see what they're going to do with it. Um, expecting them to drop it or, you know, and I think, um, with that, it all comes to down to the fact of having to this happening to be a group effort. It's not going to be um, one person or the others. It has to come from the community. It has to come from um, Turtle Island. It has to come from the world right now. And that's because we all we all live here and we all coexist with each other. And and we're going to have to um, learn to grow and learn to. Um, unlearn and unbraid and and one of the things i've i've read that poem too is is um with like when you unbraid having long hair um being able to have your hair braided for like days at a time if you're working hard and you just haven't gotten to do that fresh braid and um you undo your hair and there's all these curls and and there's like parts where they're straight and there's part where it's like all windy and there's maybe there's like a knot there and i think being able to unravel that and see like where this started and um being able to see the um the like trauma when it comes from our ancestors and, and being able to to notice that different part of that braid and be able to comb it out as a community and it can't just that own person combing their own hair there has to be that able to um be able to comb that out and, and then start to braid that new braid. So yeah, probably didn't make any sense, but yeah, just trying to, no, no. <laughs> tell him y'all, it totally made sense. You tell him Luta. <laughs> I have just one more thing to share. It just came to me circling back to that question. Um, who can you go to and influence to start making changes that you have addressed? I think an important factor that non-Indigenous people have to consider is we are equip, equip, equipping you with the resources to learn about us. The internet's available, follow us on social media, learn. Like sometimes it's exhausting to have to send paragraphs and paragraphs, like you can learn too. You can learn too. Like, yes, we're, we when we are available, we will teach and we will educate, but, a big factor about together, you have to be able to learn and not just be listening so you can speak, listen so that you can understand. That's a big thing. Anyways, I'm done talking now. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. Lots of gratitudes in the chat. Gratitude from dear Donnie, from dear Orlando as an educator. Um, we have encouragement from Mrs. Bordeaux, who says, awesome, fantastic, amazing youth adults listen. Yes, please. Um, Cynthia offering lots of gratitude in the chat and Siblery also offering lots of gratitude for your powerful visions. Leave, it, leave a couple minutes for a few more questions. And if folks don't have any other questions, we can close. Thank you all so much. I'm feeling super, super emotional. Um, specific gratitude from Alicia for dear Tuswecha's words. Give a couple minutes for more questions. And just echoing, echoing what someone offered earlier in the chat, it absolutely takes courage to do what the three of you did today. And very, very, very grateful. We're all grateful to you. Tyler says, thank you all for sharing. Your voices and feelings are very much appreciated and valid. Love you guys, sweetie. I think, I think fam, we can close. Looking forward to being with you all again. Lots of love being shared. Kyla on Facebook says, my heart is completely full. Lila Wopila Tonka for sharing this space, your experiences and voices. I'm inspired. We see you and hear you. Thank you, dear Kyla, for offering that. Sibby says 100. <laughs> I'm just going to read the chat now. Somebody take over. I don't want to do it anymore. It's making me emotional. So looking forward to 
future events like this with you all, you all proposing things that you would like to see happen, workshops that you would like to see happen, you leading workshops for Racing Magpie, all of that is very, very exciting. Encourage folks to also keep, keep track of the, um, the winter camp events that we have coming up. Um, we have a couple more months of really exciting stuff. And I know that Muta and Tuswacha and Wasey will be with us at those events too. And I look forward to that. Thank you everyone so much. Hearts, we can unmute and say, see you later to each other. And we'll close. Love all you guys. I appreciate you. Okay, thank you guys. Love you. Thank you.